Welcome to I Got You Day, your daily reflection. I am Father Sony Sebastian, a Divine Word Missionary Priest. Jesus said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, He wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In today's Gospel, Mark speaks of God's plan for men and, men and women drawn together in marriage. He wishes that they be one for life, faithful and committed to each other, just as God is faithful and committed to mankind forever. The Pharisees wanted to test Jesus by asking whether it was against the law for a man to divorce his wife. Jesus took the question as an opportunity to put forth his high ideals on the subject of marriage. He proposed that when two people were entering into marriage, they were entering into a covenant relationship with one another and with God. He further added that if in the past there were uh, some concession to human nature, this was not so from the beginning. Jesus was proposing this high ideal of marriage as God wanted it. In today's gospel, Jesus proposes marriage as a union of equal beings who are primarily identified in terms of their orientation to God. Women are not things. They are not part of man's patrimony. They are persons. The central message of today's text is that both men and women are beings before God and they are equal before Him. This is their basic feature. At the same time, they are also one for the other. Men and women are created in God's image and this seals their relationship. This Sunday's readings are a powerful reminder of the equality between men and women, without which there cannot be a healthy human and Christian life. God wanted marriage to reflect His own love for His people, a love which never fails and which grants the gift of life. Therein lies the difficulty with marriage as well. Marriage is a challenge to be like God. No wonder that marriage is not easy. God is faithful. He does not love us only when we love Him. He does not abandon His affection for us because He has, be, has fallen in love with everyone else. God does not find it too troublesome to put up with our faults. He does not become irritable when we do things to get on His nerves. He does not fear that it will be too demanding to care for us when we have contracted a terrible or debilitating illness. God's love is patient, generous and thoughtful. Above all, God's love never fails. May we realize that to live with another, we need to live for the other.